Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today we're going to continue on the Mike Mensa Golden Era series, focusing on the principles of heavy duty training. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, heavy duty training is an abbreviated method of progressive resistance training focusing on gradually increasing the intensity for the goal of achieving maximum muscle growth in the shortest amount of time possible. Now, today we're going to focus on, in particular, Mike Mensa's principles of increasing intensity gradually to structure a basic heavy duty workout. Now, intensity as uh, described by Mike Mensa, as applied to bodybuilding can best be defined as the percentage of momentary ability that an individual is capable of exerting. The bodybuilder must regularly make the attempt to perform those tasks that seem impossible at the moment. And I mean, you can see that clearly in this photo where he's just repping out those last, squeezing out those last reps uh, on, on the pull down machine. And this is the very important point that he makes. Carrying a set to a point where you are forced to utilize 100% of your momentary ability is the single most important factor in increasing size and strength. Working to this point of failure where another rep is impossible despite the, the greatest effort ensures that you pass over through this breakover point. A point in the set where if you go above, growth can be stimulated. These are, these are really, really important points that he makes. Now, weak links is something that prevents the bodybuilder from basically working at this 100% momentary ability. As he puts it, with many conventional exercises, and by that he means compound exercises especially, it is not always possible for the muscles to exert 100% of their contractile ability because of the involvement of weak links. And it makes perfect sense because in a compound exercise, you have many muscles working at the same time. For example, when performing an incline press, that is an incline bench press, for example, the working of the pectorals is limited due to the involvement of the smaller and weaker triceps. A point of failure in the incline press would be reached when the triceps failed long before the failure of the bigger and stronger pectorals. And so how does one overcome these weak links? Well, he recommends the use of pre-fatiguing cycles. So this is one of the major points that Mike Mensa makes in creating a basic heavy duty cycle and it is the use of pre-fatigue cycles. Basically these are a combination of isolation exercises supersetted or cycled with a compound exercise as an example. Uh, he puts it very clearly in his book. Weak links such as the ones mentioned can be overcome by performing an isolation prior to doing a compound exercise. For example, carrying an isolation exercise such as the dumbbell fly uh, to total failure will pre-fatigue the pecs while preserving the strength of the triceps. Following this isolation exercise immediately with absolutely zero rest by a compound exercise such as dips or incline press will allow the fresh tricep muscle to serve the pecs which are now exhausted. The triceps will have a temporary strength advantage over the pectorals which will cause the pectorals to continue contracting closer to 100% of their momentary ability, mainly because of the assistance of the tricep muscles. Um, now, at this point, this performance of the muscle in, in question, in this case the pectoral, the fact that it is working at close to 100% of, of its momentary ability due to the assistance of other muscles allows to go past this breakover point mentioned earlier and therefore allows for growth to be stimulated. A really wonderful way of thinking of Mike Mensa, I have to admit. Now the following heavy duty workout split performed four days a week um, was an initial one that I came across from his books from the 70s. I know that later on in his further books, he further abbreviated and concentrated his heavy duty principles down to, to even less training with greater periods of rest. But I'm just giving you here a heavy duty workout from his earlier days in the 70s. Actually, this is from 1978, uh, which he used to 
use, I'm assuming, for his Mr. Universe competition when he won with a perfect score of 300. Now, having said that, understand that I also believe that heavy duty training is a very advanced form of training. Um, I don't see the point, for example, in supersetting leg extensions with leg presses when you can barely press, I don't know, 100 pounds. Of course, this would work better for a person who has at least achieved an intermediate or advanced level of strength. Having said that, let's go through the program. Now, the, for his superset, he actually starts off with leg extensions and immediately follows with leg presses. He does this for one cycle, then immediately follows this with a set of squats, a set of leg curls, and two to three sets of calf raises. His legs at this point are fried, and he moves on to a superset of chest of dumbbell flies and incline presses done for two two cycles so that's twice twice performed this superset similarly for the triceps he performs tricep push downs again an isolation exercise followed by a compound exercise dips performed for two cycles so this superset is performed twice as you can see with all cycles be it legs chest or triceps his principle of using pre-fatigue exercises so a pre-fatigue cycle of isolation with compound is obvious throughout this particular workout. Now having worked his legs, chest and triceps on Mondays and Thursdays, he moves on to training lats, traps and delts, biceps Tuesday and Friday. Again using the pre-fatigue cycle of using an isolation and a compound exercise together. For example for lats he uses the stiff arm pull down on the lat machine quickly followed by a close grip supinated pull down performed for two, two cycles. Uh, this is followed then by two sets of one arm dumbbell rowing. His traps, he used to train them using shrugs and then upright rows. Again, a superset performed twice. Delts, same thing here. Dumbbell laterals, an isolation exercise followed by a compound exercise, press behind the neck. Performed, the superset is performed twice and followed by bent over dumbbell lat, lat raises for two sets. And finally, his biceps are also performed in a superset fashion, barbell curls, followed by supinated chin-ups, uh, also performed twice. Now, points to keep in mind. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Mike mentions in his book that when you're performing the superset, there should be absolutely zero rest time between the supersetted exercises. And the reason is that once you wait more than a few seconds, and we're talking, I think it's you know three to five seconds, um, the muscle begins to recuperate and begins to regain its its uh, its ability to to actually perform the exercise. And so it actually starts recovering in strength. So by actually keeping the time between exercise to an absolute minimum, you tax the muscle to its 100% momentary ability and you keep it there. Another point that he makes is the importance of cutting down the workout duration. Uh, as, as obvious uh, as that might sound, it has to be all about increasing the intensity during the workouts gradually. So cutting down workout duration over time is of high importance as well. Um, of course, he recommends not pulling and jerking on the weight, instead moving the weight slowly and performing the exercise with a full range of motion. Now, a lot of you guys might be asking, guys or girls, you haven't talked about reps and sets yet. Well, I've talked about the sets, I haven't talked about the reps. He actually only recommends using a weight that you can barely handle for six reps. And if you can keep going, you do. Once you hit nine to 10 reps, you've basically reached a point where you can increase the weight that you're using for the exercise by 10% so that you can then start again uh, at a lower rep range like six reps. The whole point is to use progressive resistance as a principle of making the intensity harder and harder each workout. Again, progressive resistance is at the core of heavy duty training. Uh, as he puts it, don't add more sets, simply make the whole thing harder. Make it harder by making sure that the rest time between the supersets are zero, by cutting down on workout duration, by moving the weight slowly, by progressively increasing the poundage for each exercises. Don't add more sets, make it harder. 
he does state you can change different exercises um, if you wish as long as you adhere to the principles of heavy duty training and the use of four strips and negatives should not necessarily be performed by someone who's just starting on heavy duty training um, but more for intermediate and advanced individuals i reckon as well pre-exhaust techniques alone are difficult let alone adding four strips and negatives and if you are at that intermediate or advanced stage four strips and negatives can be performed once a week only and not on every single muscle group because again you will eat into your recuperative abilities the point is to use them wisely now Mike Mentor also offers modifications to this heavy-duty protocol with the purpose of making sure that the individual recovers sufficiently for muscular growth to occur he does state that one should definitely not train more than four days a week and we all know those that have seen his seminars and read his books that further on during his career he further modified heavy duty training to train even with less frequency and volume now as he puts in this original 1978 book that i own logical approach to muscle building heavy duty training by mike mensa he states if four days a week is too much if it's too much then cut back down one cycle of these supersets for example for most of the supersets given in the workout that i just showed you he states that you should sometimes do these once or twice but legs legs were once but for the rest of the body parts two cycles were used and so instead of using two cycles if it's too much just cut back down to one cycle of supersets also he states if it's still too much then cut down to training three days a week instead of doing workout a and b twice each do workout a on monday workout b on wednesday and then saturday do workout a and b together in one whole day this allows the body four full days of recovery during the week and only three days of training again enhancing your recuperative ability for muscle growth to take place very very wise from mike mensa indeed so there you have it a basic basic guide to using Mike Mentor's principles for a basic heavy duty training protocol. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll leave you with this awesome shot of Mike Mentor, who I do believe was the king of the crucifix pose. Veiny as hell, thick and dense, unbelievable shot. I love this shot of Mike Mentor. It's my, it's my favorite shot of Mike Mentor, I have to admit. If you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Leave me a comment and thank you for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now.